Good evening and welcome to Church Online at Christ Lutheran Church. We celebrate this evening the new year. The new year always seems to bring the promise of new hope and so it's a familiar theme in Christendom because it reminds us of, well, our baptism where we are made a new creation and that daily we wake up reminded of that baptism that we are a new creation in God. I am Pastor Ross, let us pray. And then we'll begin. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the many blessings you have poured out upon us, but especially the blessing of the new creation poured out upon us in water and word at our baptism. Be with us as we worship, as you promised to do. Uplift our hearts, our minds, our voices as we sing to you. In Christ's name, amen. Our opening hymn, 877, God who made the earth and heaven.
invite you to rise as you're able. The worship service this day is the service of prayer and preaching. We begin with the opening versicles. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, 880, Now Rest Beneath Night Shadow. continue with the readings. Our first reading this evening is from Isaiah chapter 30. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, and quietness and entrust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling, and you said, no, we will flee upon horses, therefore you shall flee away, and we will ride upon swift steeds. 
Therefore, your pursuers shall be swift. A thousand shall flee at the threat of one, and at the threat of five you shall flee, till you are left like a flagstaff on the top of a mountain, like a signal on a hill. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from Romans chapter 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. I invite you to rise as we go through three of the six chief parts we begin by reminded of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Christ shall come again. We just spent a whole season on that Advent. We don't know when he will come again. It'll be like a thief in the night. In other words, unexpected. Because we also know that when he comes again, it will be with the cry of an archangel, with the sound of a trumpet, so you won't miss it. No, for this evening, though, I want to focus on our reading from Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? New years bring the idea of new starts. Fresh, clean breaks from the past. Of all the bad things we don't like, the, the addictions, the problems, you know, we imagine the possibilities of a blank new slate, a book yet to be written, a song yet to be sung, how great and glorious it will be. And yet somehow we get to the end of that new year. And what are we looking forward again? The next new year to break again with the past, to break again with all the things we don't like about ourselves, about our society, about our neighbors. Paul, writing to the Romans, who had questions. Why were they being persecuted? Had God forgotten them? What it meant they died beforehand? Could something actually separate them from God, even though Christ had promised that he had set us in the Father's hand and he who was in the Father's hand cannot be taken away? And Paul writes these words, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Now that sounds like a wonderful promise. Graciously give us all things. Give us the things to make our problems go away. Give us more fit bodies after all. The summer is only a few months away. And we all probably overindulged on the Christmas, Thanksgiving, maybe even Halloween, candies and snacks and treats. No, that's not the things that God is promising here. That's not the things that God promises in Christ. God doesn't promise an easy life. In fact, Christ is very explicit in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the persecuted for my name's sake. Blessed are not the strong, but the meek, not the proud, but the humble. No. What are the things that God graciously gives us? The things that are counted as all things. The things that are greater than just the temporal. That are greater than just a day on the calendar. It's the forgiveness of sins. It's life everlasting. It's literally eternity. So that nothing, not tribulation, not persecution, not famine or nakedness, danger, the sword, not death, not powers great or small, not Satan, not sin, can separate us from God. The clean slate comes to us every single day. And the blood of Christ, which washes our sins away, which makes us new. You don't have to start diets on Monday. You don't have to start plans on the new year. You don't have to sit there and say, this year I'm going to do better. Every day, you are a new creation. Every day is a blank slate. Every day, your sins are washed away and separated from you as far as the east is from the west. And that's better. That's better than a beach bod. 
That's better than a million or a billion dollars. That's better than a promotion. It's better because all those other things are temporary. Beach bodies get old. You retire. The stock market crashes. You get hungry. No, it's better because the promises of God are eternal. The promise that I mentioned at the beginning, well, it reminds us of our baptism, is forever. You were claimed by God. The Holy Spirit came down and resided in you in your baptism when the pastor or somebody else poured out water on your head and said, I baptize you in the name of the, wa- in the, name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you were dunked or, or however the water was applied. The promise of God came to you. The Holy Spirit came and dwelt in you and you were given the gift of faith which means you were given the gift of the forgiveness of sins. You were given the gift of salvation. You were given eternity. You were given the keys to the kingdom, the kingdom of eternity, the kingdom of heaven. And you were given a promise that even though this mortal world will pass away, God will remake it. And heaven will come down and he will dwell with his people. In other words, he will live with you and you will live with him in eternity in a body that doesn't die, that doesn't hunger, that doesn't thirst. That God will wipe away your sorrows with his very hand and your tears of weeping will become tears of joy. This promise is for all who believe. Nothing can separate us from Christ. And when he returns, all things will be made new. And these gifts will be given to all who believe. So let us take out that message of hope. Everybody's looking for a blank slate right now. Let's tell them where to find the blank slate. Where Christ promises to be, the gathering of his saints, the administration of the sacraments, the preaching, the teaching of his word. Let's tell them where the hope and the joy is. And that it's all because God loves them so, so very much. As much as he loves you and I. And how much is that? to send Christ to the cross for us and to raise him again on Easter day. In his name, amen. We now continue with hymn 882, O Christ, who art the light and day. Oh, Lord. 
ministry here at Christ has helped you and you don't have a home church and would like to support our ministry, you can do so in three easy ways. The first is online at www.christlutheranmustang.org. Click on the Give Today button. If you're like me and you just like to text things on your phone, you can text the numerical amount you would like to give to 833-381-0608. Both are online giving and our text to give options are operated through a company called Vanco, a very safe and secure banking company. And you can always just mail a check to our physical address at 501 North Clear Springs Road, Mustang, Oklahoma, 73064. I invite you to rise as you're able as we continue with the prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those on our hearts and minds, for those prayers that we cannot put into the words, but the Spirit prays on our behalf, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Eternal God, we commit to your mercy and forgiveness the year now ending and commend to your blessing and love the times yet to come. And the new year, abide among us with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that, by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Thank you for worshiping and joining with us this evening. We close with the hymn, All Praise to Thee, My God, This Night.
praise to Thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light. Keep me, O oh, keep me, King of Kings, beneath Thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, Lord, for Thy. me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may rise glorious at the awful day. Oh, may my soul in thee repose and may sweet sleep mine eyelids close. Sleep that shall Son, I